You're listening to Brian Sussman on Hot Talk 560 KSFO. Then it's 23 minutes before 8 o'clock. Joining us on the hotline right now, we have Assemblyman Chuck DeVore. Good morning, Mr. DeVore. How are you, sir? Well, good morning. Uh, I'm doing better, but it feels like my wallet is about $600 million lighter. This is an incredible story. Here we are, the state of California facing a $600 million rate hike from CalPERS, uh, which would mean we'd be increasing the state's annual contribution to almost $4 billion. Maybe you should start by describing to our listeners exactly what CalPERS is. Well, it's the California Public Employees Retirement System. And it's basically the retirement system that we have for our um, public employees, except for our, our, our teachers who have their own um, separate system called CalSTRS. Now, what happened with this fund is a couple of things. About 10 years ago, Gray Davis and the legislature, just before the dot-com bubble burst, did what some people, like John Eastman, who's running for attorney general, thinks is an illegal gift of public funds by retroactively increasing the pensions for our public employees here in California. In other words, above what their actual negotiated um, uh, deals were, the, the union contracts. Uh, now, they also allow them to retire earlier. Now, this was okay for a few months until the dot-com bubble burst, and then what went from a surplus went to a massive deficit. Now, fast forward a few years. What has happened is that in spite of the fact that CalPERS has an enormous uh, portfolio, uh, billions and billions of dollars, in fact, uh, uh, $205 billion as of Friday is the total worth of their portfolio, but they've lost $55.2 billion, or about a quarter value last year when the stock market went down. And so under rules that have been passed uh, by the general, uh, uh, what is it, GASB uh, 45, which is like the uh, it's a general standards for accounting uh, that all governments have to follow. Uh, GASB 45, that ruling said that governments now have, have to actually account for the money that they owe for their retirees. They can't just keep cooking the books or putting little footnotes down at the bottom. And so even though uh, CalPERS has $205 billion, for them to have the proper valuation so they don't actually start uh, digging into their nest egg to pay what we owe our public employees, that means then that the taxpayers have to pony up another $600 million. And it looks like $600 million a year for the rest of time, and probably more. Okay, this this is not reality. This is not sustainable, and this doesn't square with the reality, for example, of the public sector where the vast majority of private companies did away with their pensions a long time ago because they knew, Chuck DeVore, this wouldn't be affordable down the line, correct? Well, that's correct. Uh, what we need to go to eventually is what's known as defined contribution, not defined benefit. Now, defined contribution is like a 401K where you put into the system uh, with tax-free dollars, the, the company, or in this case, the government would help you, versus defined uh, benefit, which is that you work a certain amount of time and then the government will owe you a certain amount of money a year for the rest of your life. Now, obviously, with people retiring earlier and living longer in this big grant of public funds that was done about 10 years ago under Gray Davis, which, by the way, may in fact be illegal and could be retroactively overturned if uh, John Eastman's legal theories are correct. And by the way, uh, John Eastman worked in the Reagan administration for Clarence Thomas when I worked in the Reagan administration for Cap Weinberger. We actually knew each other back then, and, and uh, we've been friends ever since, and I'm, I'm happy to back him for attorney general. In fact, if he if he can retroactively get us out of this uh, massive and probably illegal grant of public funds, uh, he can save the taxpayers of the state billions upon billions of dollars. But you're right, this is unsustainable, and, and this is awful, uh, an awful lot like Greece, where Greece had the same problem. They, they granted these wonderfully generous benefits and allowed people to retire at, what, age 52? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, uh, that's not going to work. Now, uh, Senator Dennis Hollingsworth has a, a Senate bill out which would try to reduce, well, the goal would be reduce pension benefits for new workers in the state of California. This is a plan that would obviously save billions down the line, but 
the Democrats are obviously against this, correct? Uh, well, yes, they are, although in the long term they may begin to reevaluate because uh, they have some choices that they have to make. Uh, are they going to help their public sector employee allies who, frankly now, are paid better than the folks in the private sector are on average and have far better health and, and pension benefits? Uh, or are they going to uh, think that educating our young and uh, protecting those in our society that aren't able to protect themselves, the you know, aged and the indigent, are they going to decide that they're more important? Uh, that's going to be like the irresistible force versus the immovable object. And certainly in the near term, the taxpayers should hold on to their wallets because that's where everyone's going to look first. Hmm. Could you talk to us for just a moment about Proposition 14? I We have talked about it extensively on this radio show. I'm continually getting emails from people saying, okay, it's, explain to me exactly how this works. I've got my, my absentee uh, ballot here. I'm about to send it in. Talk to me about Proposition 14. I'm going to allow you to do that, Chuck DeVore. Well, I'm not a big fan of Proposition 14, and I'll, I'll tell you why. First of all, how it got on the ballot. It, it got on the ballot when State Senator Abel Maldonado, now Lieutenant Governor, held out for his vote for the largest tax increase in U.S. history at the state level in exchange for his 30 pieces of silver, which was getting Prop 14 on the ballot. Now, why did Abel Maldonado want Prop 14 on the ballot? Well, what Prop 14 says is that whoever have the top two votes in the June primary, regardless of party, go on to be the uh, two folks on the uh, ballot in November, basically a runoff system. Now, if you're someone like Abel Maldonado, who is the most moderate Republican in the Senate, you're going to have a hard time winning a Republican primary under the current rules. But with Prop 14, if it passed, then, uh, so the theory goes, uh, people like Abel Maldonado could be in the top two, and then the public sector employee unions would help them out uh, if they were running against a fellow Republican, of course, if they were running against a Democrat, they'd go with the Democrat, go with the real deal. So what Prop 14 will do if it passes is you'll never again, in all likelihood, see a Libertarian or a Peace and Freedom or a Green Party person in the November ballot. They'll be eliminated uh, in the primary process. And what you'll typically have is one Democrat versus one Republican or two Republicans or two Democrats. Now, one of the reasons why I don't like this is, for example, uh, in many parts of California where you have these gerrymandered districts, uh, you'll never see a Republican on the ballot in November. And that prevents the party from getting the word out. That prevents the party from communicating with voters and explaining to them what their philosophies are, what their, what their policies are. Similarly, where I live in Orange County, in many cases you'll see uh, two Republicans on the ballot. And why that's a bad deal is that we have a lot of Republicans in Orange County who are certainly Republicans in name only. They're very friendly with the public sector employee unions. And what you're likely going to see is that those unions will say, look, don't run a Democrat. We'll go in and we'll help the Republican that's the most friendly to us. So you'll have a real Republican and a fake Republican on the November ballot. And then the unions will dump all kinds of money in to help their uh, you know, lesser <laughs> Republican uh, get elected. Now, some people say, well, this is good. We want more moderates in Sacramento. Well, my response to that is we passed a redistricting initiative last year, two mm -hmm. years ago now. Let's let it work. We're going to have, uh, the, when the census is completed, there will be new lines drawn uh, in time for the 2012 elections. And when those lines are drawn, you're going to see probably 40 percent of the districts around the state of California be truly competitive. And that's where you're going to get, presumably, the moderates uh, that many in the business community and, and a lot of good government people think that we need. That's a great point. Chuck DeVore, I know you're very busy. Thanks for doing everything you're doing for we the people here in the state of California as an assemblyman, and we look forward to having you on the broadcast again very soon. Thank you, sir. All right, very good. That's our good friend Chuck DeVore on KSFO.